Hi, welcome to this very first SCBA reflection for 2022 and a very happy new year to you. I hope, we hope that you had a great Christmas and we bring new year greetings from the whole of the team, from Colin, from Claire, from Amy, from Joy, uh, from Steve and of course myself. I don't know about you, but often you can feel like you know, you move from Christmas into the new year fairly quickly and soon your focus is thinking about what is coming up, what is ahead in this coming year. But this year I found that quite difficult to do. Most years I, I love to think forward, I like to have a plan, I like to have some idea of where I'm going, but this year it's not been that straightforward. In fact, it's been a little bit like the weather that we've been having recently. Recently the weather has uh, produced a lot of fog and mist that the other day as I woke up I pulled back the curtains, looked out the window and I could just about see the other side of the road that we live on. And it feels a little bit like that for 2022. You may have noticed that I'm here in Bournemouth, in fact that's Bournemouth Pier just in the background there. And I'm here because I'm part of the planning team for the Baptist Assembly and we'll be meeting here this year in May 2022 at Bournemouth for the Baptist Assembly this year and I hope that you can join us. But as we've been travelling around the BIC here, meeting the team, looking at different possibilities, a number of times we've had the conversation about, well we're not sure, we're not sure what, it's going to be look, what, what it will look like, we're not sure exactly how that will come together, partly because of the uncertainty of the times that we live in. And uh, as we move forward, as you plan forward, you may actually feel like it feels like you're looking at some fog and it's very difficult to see what is ahead of us. So I thought I'd stop and perhaps just bring a few thoughts about what it looks like in terms of moving forward into the future when it's a future, a year of uncertainty. I hope that you'll forgive me if I just for a moment or two take you back to the Christmas story. Because what I've discovered over the years is often we, we visit parts of the Christmas story. So we, we think about the announcements of John the Baptist and the birth of Christ to Mary and Joseph. And we think about the birth itself and the shepherds on the hillside and the angels and so forth. But often in, in the move of Christmas, from Christmas to New Year particularly, we move on fairly quickly. And there are parts of the birth narrative that often are missed. So I want to take you back to part of Matthew's account. After the Magi have visited Mary and Joseph and, and the Christ child. And Matthew records for us these words. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so it was fulfilled that God had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. I find it amazing, quite remarkable, that in the story of God, the coming of Christ, what we discover is after this big movement of the Spirit, of angels coming, of angels singing, of great announcements being made, of the birth of the child, the miraculous birth of the child taking place. After all this, suddenly it all seems to go in the wrong direction. It all seems to become very foggy. Suddenly this, this dear little family have to escape and you kind of scratch your head and wonder, where is God in the midst of all this? There's so much uncertainty, there's so much fog that is going on. God hasn't revealed the full picture to Joseph. But in a vision, he just simply says, or a dream, he simply says, go to Egypt, escape, because Herod is going to try and kill Jesus. I'm not a big fan of the modern day word vision. Um, it, vision is important, don't misunderstand me. But often vision is overstated. We want to know the, the big plan. We want to know all the details and people call that vision. But what I've discovered in my own ministry, but also 
in my understanding of scripture is that there is very little big plan going on. Often the people involved aren't told what God is doing on the big scale. They're just told little steps and sometimes those little steps seem to be quite strange. They seem to enter in time, into times of uncertainty and, and, and then there are times when it just seems like the fog comes down and all you can see is just about enough space in front of you to take the next few steps. I find great encouragement that this small family, the family of which Jesus was placed into, Joseph and Mary and Jesus, in their story went through moments of great uncertainty. What I find remarkable about this passage is uh, these words where Matthew is speaking of Joseph. He says, so he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Obviously Joseph had this dream and then he woke up and immediately he's, he's getting everything ready. He's collecting all the items that need to go with them. He's awakening Mary, he's collecting Jesus and they're off very, very quickly. He doesn't wait for the morning. He doesn't wait to have a conversation with Mary or maybe a few of the elders in the village to weigh up whether God has said this or not. He believes immediately that God has spoken to him and he acts straight away to do what God has called him to do. I find great encouragement in that. I, I've, I've had a few dreams in my life, you probably have as well. Some of them a load of nonsense to be quite honest. But occasionally I think God may have been speaking to me and I must admit I haven't got up in the middle of the night to act on them and maybe I should have done it, I'm, I'm not sure but I'm really impressed by Joseph who does exactly that I'm impressed by his belief that God has spoken in, in the fogginess, in the uncertainty in, in the strangeness where there is no plan he believes God has shown him the next steps and he begins to follow that journey to Egypt I remember driving once from Eastbourne to Seaford, I just passed my driving test and it was really foggy and we had to go really slowly on the road that we had driven along many, many times, and, but you just could not see the road. But we knew the road was there and it's a little bit like that, although of course we don't know where the road is going to lead, but what we do know is that God has laid a path for us and we can trust him that he will lead us and direct us. What I also love about Joseph in this passage is that his obedience isn't just blind obedience. It's not like this emotional response to fear where he gathers everything up and his family and, and runs as fast as he can to Egypt because he's received a warning from God. I think it's much deeper than that. I think his obedience also is that there's an element of trusting and believing and having faith in God's plan. He goes to Egypt and he waits. And if we'd read on further in the passage, we would read that he receives eventually a third dream. His patience is an example to us. And as he receives this third dream, he begins to implement his faith once again, trusting in God, going back to the place that is still dangerous to see the fulfillment of God's promise in his son Jesus. And as he does so, we see a person that trusts God. He didn't have the fullness and there was a huge amount of fogginess around what on earth God was up to and yet his faith was strong. I hope as we enter into 2022 that we find from the example of Joseph someone who when he hears from God, even though it's just a few steps, he's willing to be obedient. But not just obedient to walk into the fog, but obedient to trust that God's plans will be fulfilled. May we be such people. May we be ready to hear of God. May we take the small steps forward. And may we be faithful, people full of faith, believing that God will fulfill his plan, whatever his plans are, and that gradually the fog will lift and we will see the wonder of God's work. 
as we go into 2022, I wanted to share this prayer with you from Paul as he writes to the Christians in Ephesus from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that according to the wealth of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner person, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, so that because you have been rooted and grounded in love, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and thus to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled up with all the fullness of God. May that be true for you this year. Amen.